All right, we're going to have a look at this pump. This is one of the first steps we're going to do on rebuilding this pump. I'm not sure if we're going to reuse it or sell it. I'm not too sure. Yet, but... So we're going to have a look in this pump. We're going to start taking it apart, doing an inspection. I'm just going to take everything apart for inspection because I know we don't really need to remove this. But I'm going to remove that. And then we're going to, I guess we'll just pop this top piece off. And then we're going to remove the outer shell and break it. See right there how the water drops down below and is going to hit the impeller and swing it around. I can just tell by looking at the impeller that the direction of rotation is going to be like that up and out. So let's just remove this top piece now and then we're going to remove this outside case. I gotta get those last two bolts out, so I'm gonna have to put a pry bar in there, pry it down enough, and then spin her out. Or just get a wrench, 13 mil wrench underneath. But, well, you can't win them all. See if I can get it out. I want to try to be careful with that gasket. I just got the outer housing off and this covers the impeller so just spin that off. Now if we want to remove the impeller we have to remove this nut and by removing that nut, our mechanical seal will be behind that impeller. Well, I don't know if it's really a nut. I think maybe the whole impeller is all part of it. Well, as you look at it, the impeller will spin this way as the engine turns and then eject the fluid out. So it's going to come in through the middle, inside here. And as it comes around, it's going to go out. I know it looks backwards, but that's the way it works. How to determine pump rotation by impeller design. Impellers must turn in a direction so that the fluid is pushed, not scooped, through the pump. Exceptions are pumps with straight vein impellers, veins perpendicular to the shaft and shrouded impellers. Straight vein impellers function in either direction. Shrouded impellers turn so they scoop the fluid. Sure does. Now we'll just remove the impeller. I already see something wrong with this mechanical seal and I'm going to show you that in a second. But first we're just going to remove these last four bolts and then we're going to pull it off and then the whole pumps off the assembly. As far as the pump housing looks, it looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any cracks. The mechanical seal looks good on this side. There's no evidence of the seal leaking past because that's the last thing you want. Otherwise, it'll leak behind here and it could get into your crankcase. Unless, of course, this was designed with a weep hole. Yeah, it does have a weep hole, so it would leak right by. So that's a pretty good, smart design. Now, on the impeller, if you look closely, there's a crack there. There's a crack there, and then there's a crack there. So this mechanical seal, the ceramic part here, should actually be changed out. Now if we look at the impeller itself, there's not a lot of signs of cavitation or heavy wear. The impeller is actually in pretty good shape. So now that we got the pump apart, the only thing we really have to look at is a mechanical seal. Um, the outside rubber seal is pretty good, so I'm going to start hunting out and try to find out how much a mechanical seal is going to cost me. Um, hopefully it's not going to cost too much. I want to try to keep the cost on this project low, but yeah, that's the video of stripping down the impeller. We're going to do another video once I get the mechanical seal 
we're going to replace the mechanical seal and we're going to talk more about pumps and stuff and how to calculate flow and everything else. But I'm going to leave the video at this. If you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.